Well, I think that human beings are meant to be inhabited by God. And God is a worker. And he projects himself through the lives of individuals. So that when we participate in work, we are producing a value in terms of what God is already doing. We know that Christ is the, literally the glue of the universe. Uh, so that when we are working with any kind of material, uh, uh, we're working with Christ. And we have that attitude of faith and trust as we come to live with him in the kingdom of God. And that in, in certainly extends to our work with other people. Older moralists used to say the only really good thing is a good person and we contribute to the lives of others in our work because work is a communal activity, always. Uh, you have to really do a uh, sort of uh, Robinson Crusoe, Friday kind of thing, which is uh, imaginary and it's interesting to watch how they came together uh, in their time. So work is fundamentally God's work and we can pervert it and turn it away by lack of faith in God. And the effect of work is the development of persons. Wealth comes in as a part of that because uh, if you have money, your kingdom is extended. That enables your kingdom, by the way, is simply the range of your effective will. So if you have money, there are many, many ways in which you can extend the range of your effective will, and then that feeds back on the kind of person that you are to become, and that's eternal work. Uh, because the glory of our future is continuing creativity in the life of God, and that comes out in the last chapter of the Bible very nicely. Um, and uh, once we get over the idea that uh, Heaven is going to be eternity in um, uh, a resort of some kind, maybe La Quinta. Uh, the uh, outgoing of God in creation to create what is good in love is what we do. And then since we have a lot to get over, coming into the world we come into, there is a process of transformation that goes with it. But it is primarily a process of surrender to God in work. Um, now, that gives you a different version of what salvation is and what it's all about. But the reintegration of the person into the kingdom of God to exercise dominion, as indicated in the first chapter of Genesis, uh, that's the that's what work is about. Okay, so let, let's let's be. I want to be really clear about this. Yes. What what is it precisely that you would say gives work its eternal significance? Well, it's twofold. It has an outcome, which is the work of value that is shared with others. Paul, you remember, says, "Work with your hands so that you can give to those." But giving is not the only thing. It is create creativity. So that's the output. The other aspect of work is what it does for me. I am becoming a, a certain kind of person in all that I do. And work is learning how to act with God and with others in the production of value. And, and in order to do that, that's where we come back to the position of the servant and the dignity of the individual, the guy who's, the gal who's mopping the floor needs to be able to see that work as, what, as an eternal work that they're doing in God's world. And then the understanding of the kingdom of God and the individual, which we hope would be taught from the pulpits, mm -hmm. uh, would lay the foundation for that. Okay. So, so Bill, sort of in light of this, why, why do you think that so many business men and women don't see their work as having eternal value? that they simply see it as, a, as an instrumental means to some other end? Uh, I, I think that's probably because they, 
they're in an environment which doesn't have that expectation. Uh, the job is structured as such so that it's focused only on doing. Um, and um, there is no, there's no, there no attempt to, to make this a meaningful experience for the development of the whole person. There's a, there's a great quote from Henry Ford when he said, why is it I always get the whole person when all I really wanted was a pair of hands? <laughs> and, and there's a lot that happens in a structured work environment that treats people as a pair of hands. It starts with the job description. You know, as we, as we formalize the process of management, we can, we can translate it very much into a function period. Um, and so, uh, and the other thing I found in, in, in the practicalities of work and designing the task and structure and so forth is that if your ultimate object objective is to have the person in a development mode, which in my experience required a sense of being able to give something of value to others as part of the job. Um, that uh, in order to give to others, in order to serve, uh, one of the greatest impediments I found was if the people were insecure, they had a very tough time serving others. It was kind of a, I realize I'm giving you a generality and I'm not a psychologist, so, but, but, but that's, that was my practical experience. And if you look at the cycle of development, starting with the job, the job gives us an opportunity for a person to achieve or to fail. And um, what you do, depending upon those two results, is very important to that person. Um, if they achieve, but you fail to recognize that, then there isn't the satisfaction in the individual. I've accomplished something. <laughs> Which is a very important part, process of feeling good about yourself. And if you don't feel good about yourself, it's going to be hard to serve others. So, you know, there, there's a whole positive cycle. But on the other hand, if you analyze why people fail in their job, it probably is one of many four or five factors. One, uh, the job hasn't properly been designed. Two, the person hasn't been trained for the job. Three, you selected somebody who doesn't have the skills for that job and has skills for other jobs. Four, the person just doesn't do the job. Now, three out of four is the manager's fault. It's not the individual's fault who's failed. Uh, rarely is that recognized in the work environment on failures. Now, I don't, I don't know, you probably have all kinds of different views about Walmart, but uh, one of the programs Walmart had that I was never able to implement effectively in ServiceMaster was they figured out that they were spending a lot of money firing store managers who'd failed and hiring new people and training them. And so they, they created a course and the only way to get in it was to be a failed store manager. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a course that ran over four to five months, and it was taught by the senior executives. And they had an 80% success rate coming out of the failed manager's course. Which kind of, again, reflects this focus on the person. <laughs>